And as I said, my, my salary in Dubai was 73,000 dirhams, which is a rich salary, at least how I look back. And you don't pay any tax on that. You're getting this kind of salary. They would say, is it monthly or are you talking about annual salary? You're not enjoying life. You're just being a miser. You're saving every dollar, not having an abundance mindset. When do you start spending money on yourself? My daughter would come back and say, okay, that parent gave a range rover and you are giving me a $50 Amazon card. Are you, have you, have you lost your mind? That whatever they were asking for one kid, we had a trip with a family of five to the UK and back for two weeks and they were asking almost the same amount for one kid. Another mistake was one of my colleagues bought an expensive car for themselves and when I met them at the office parking I was like oh you changed your car you upgraded your car he was like yeah it was my birthday yesterday and I thought I'll gift myself. <laughs> I was like, I mm -hmm. went and I bought a Nissan Patrol for around 300,000 dirhams. dirhams. Of course I couldn't afford it. When I bought the car I realized in six months that I don't like cars. So Barrows, I was talking to Patul in our podcast uh, on my Urdu channel. What surprised me that she told me about your uh, wealth, that it has quadrupled, if I, if I may say that, uh, while you were in Canada and the US, while that was in a, a disarray while you were in Dubai, which was actually a shock to me, that people actually come to Dubai to make money uh, and, and go to Canada uh, to just get the passports or PRs or whatever the case is. So what was your story actually behind this? Yeah, well, if I just take a step back. So I was in Dubai for around seven years and I left Dubai in 2017. And uh, I, I was working with Procter & Gamble. I was head of finance for the IMEA region, India, Middle East, Africa and Pakistan for a, for a big business unit. And I was making good money in Dubai. Uh, but... By the time I decided to leave Dubai, I was leaving almost with nothing. And let me give you some facts as well, some numbers as well. So for instance, in Dubai towards the end of it, like of, of course when I came to Dubai, I, I had a certain salary, but towards the end of it in around 2017 when I was leaving Dubai, my salary was around 75,000 dirhams per month, everything included. And uh, which for me is a big check. And when I tell any friend or anyone that this is the kind of money I was making, they kind of have a, an understanding that I would be carrying a lot of wealth with me. And for them, it was very easy to say, okay, if you're moving to Canada, if, if you're making the choice to move to Canada, this should be an easy choice for you because you are a rich man. But you and I know there is a big difference between being rich and be between being wealthy. Yes. So I was rich, but I was not wealthy at all. And I was not ready for the adventure that I would have, I was looking or I was moving into with regards to Canada. Because as you rightly said, when people are making such a big move, they are counting on their savings. They are counting on their wealth because they know it will take them some time to get a job. It will take them, them some time to settle there. And it may also take them some time to get the kind of income that they're making here. Or maybe that income never happens for them at all because the kind of incomes you make in Dubai you don't get them in Canada. And even if you get them after tax basis, you will never be a good match. Like you may get a good gross income, but the net income eventually ends up being not that great. And when I was leaving Dubai, I, as I said, I was rich, but I was not wealthy, which means that I wasn't carrying with me a lot of uh, savings. And hence it was a big challenge for me. And as I said, my, my salary in Dubai was 73,000 dirhams, which is a rich salary, at least, how I look back, and you don't pay any tax on that. Exactly, uh, so, this this seventy three thousand uh, dollar dirhams salary is uh, is something which uh, people sometimes, if you if you tell a regular guy uh, in the way that you you are getting this kind of salary, they would say, is it monthly or are you talking about annual salary? So this this is the, that kind of salary. So uh, and if you adjust it for inflation like 2017 it's been around uh, 7 years now i would say it would be easily 85 or 90000 dirhams per per month which is a, again a, a massive number so so yeah so from income wise my income was very good but it was all as as we as i say on my channel as well and you've spoken about it on your channel as well that the first thing that you need to fix is your savings not the income, not the investments. If there's a hole in your savings, in your lifestyle, no matter how much money you earn, it will all be leaking out. I was young and I was foolish. I thought I would be able to always 
be as young as as strong as I am today not realizing that I will eventually have kids I will make a family and I will start to turn old and old as well and at that time my career was flying as well so I always imagined that my career would be on the same trajectory and maybe for many people it is the case but it would be very hard and I would be very hard pressed to find someone who can have a flawless career like you have good times but there are always bad times and really this is what happened this is the reason I started my channel this is the reason I started my side income and my focus on wealth and I started learning about wealth I had no idea about money before that before 2017 because when I moved to Canada and I, I had enough money to just put get a house average car a five-year old driven car and some money in the bank to survive for uh, six months to a year at max but I I would have sleepless nights because I am now 33 years old I have two kids and my wife who's not worked in Dubai not worked for five six years so she doesn't have an experience now everyone in my family is relying on me and I would have sleepless nights it took me two one and a half months to find a job and during that one and a half months I was not able to sleep well and I promised myself that never again I would put myself in this situation because this was a personal choice I decided to leave Dubai I decided to move to Canada however there could be an instance where this happens just because the company decides to fire me or a fire a bunch of people and I would not want to be in that situation again where I can't sleep at night so I promised myself that here from 2017 onwards I will make sure that I learn about money I learn how to invest I learn how to make money and I learn how to save money and because of all that I'm in a position where my wealth is almost is, is, I, I, I can call myself a millionaire easy so it's, it's far more than a million dollars and I'm in a position not to retire today because I may need some more but I'm in a good position that if my company says goodbye Barrows today I can survive very well without losing an inch of sleep. Wow, uh, that's inspiring. Uh, but uh, just to expand on that, uh, as you were saying while you were in Dubai, uh, and you were not uh, living the ideal lifestyle that you were living living now, because now you you are more conscious about whatever you're spending, whatever you're buying, whatever you think that your wants are. Um, and I know Dubai's culture and Dubai's uh, uh, glamour. Uh, people fall for it. Uh, people fall for large house, uh, big cars, uh, and, and whatnot. And even expensive school for kids. Because I, I'm a firm believer that if you are paying yourself for for the for the kids' school, uh, even then, if you're not paying for them, uh, maybe your company is paying for that. You, still, you should not go uh, above and beyond. The reason is that once your kids go to to a fancy school, they will find that kind of uh, crowd. Uh, within that uh, school and I have I have seen myself um, my son who was going into a ve very expensive school at one time uh, they were going uh, on on a trip to Spain and they were asking for some fee I don't remember now but I uh, vividly re remember that whatever they were asking for one kid we had a trip uh, with a family of five to the UK and back for two weeks and they were asking almost the same amount for one kid uh, going to Spain for a, for a week so this is the problem. I mean, I could have afforded that school or even let's say my company could have afforded that school. But uh, then these kind of expenses come and then you have to uh, worry about, let's say, your, your kids will not be happy if they won't go, uh, go to such kind of trips. Uh, so you have to take, uh, you, have, you have to make choices uh, in, in that regard. So I would like to know what kind of mistakes you think that you made uh, while you were in Dubai and you are not going to repeat them while you are in Canada or the US. It's a great point, Wali, and I'll answer this question, but let me just build on the point you made with regards to kids. I think it's an important point. And I believe the podcast you had with Batul as well, uh, she must have spoken about this piece. Just I, just that just uh, that that podcast was in Urdu language, but if anybody understands that, uh, they should go and check that out. I've, I'll put the link somewhere and you'll put the link as well. Cool. So talking about Dubai, so people do ask me, when I moved to Canada, would you ever go back to Dubai? I was like, if I was single or if, I, if even married without kids, in a heartbeat, I would be back in Dubai and I would be your neighbor. Hmm. But the, <laughs> the challenge is kids. Hmm. And this was one of the reasons we decided to move from Dubai to Canada. It wasn't just because of us getting a passport. That is an important part, which is kids having a passport in future and all. But 
in one way, once you are out of Pakistan, once you've established a life outside, you get yourself uh, established as well. Your kids are studying abroad as well. You've given them a life and there is very less chance they'll ever go back. Now, they won't have a passport. There might be some struggle with the travel and all, but probably you can plus minus. There are people who do have Pakistani passports or non, uh, non-Western passports. And if they have good paying jobs, they have good education from good schools in U.S. and all they can still manage. For me, the more important part was kids growing up in the way in this kind of luxury. The example you gave about your son being uh, going to Spain and the cost, I remember reading in the newspaper that there was once a teacher, you know how every year parents give a gift to a teacher, like you give a, mm-hmm. here it's the routine is you give a $25 Amazon gift card. By the way, that's even a lot. In the way I read the news that one of the teachers from the school got a Range Rover from one really? of the parents. Yeah. So and, really? and and the and the piece was she was asked to give it back by the school. So they said mm. either you resign or give the car mm. back. So she resigned. Of of course, if I was <laughs> her as well, I would resign as well because I'm sure she can find a better job. But yeah. the point is, imagine the amount of money your kids would be seeing going around. So my my daughter would come back and say, okay, that parent gave a Range Rover, and you are giving me a fifty dollar Amazon card. Are you have you, have you lost your mind? Because this will be embarrassing for me when I go there. And I, I, I understand it. Like, no matter how much education you give to your kids, I would feel the same pressure if I was a kid as well. If everyone is enjoying some uh, a good phone and I have a very cheap phone or I don't have a phone, I would be very depressed as a child. Now, when you grow up, you can create that muscle. You can create that muscle where you go like, I don't care, I'll drive a beaten car. I don't care if everyone has a better car. By the way, I find I struggle with that even today. But for a kid, it is it is very painful for you to put your kid in that situation. So that was one of the reasons I was like, we need to we need to go in a place where we can raise our kids the kind of similar way we were raised, but in more security and in more safety. And hence, the reason was to move to Canada. Now, talking about the question you asked, which was mistakes, there were numerous mistakes starting with one kid's education. So I would just see, okay, in my circle, where are people sending their kids? And if they're sending to their kids to a school, which is rated, let's say, top uh, in the top three, then I would mm. send them in a school which is, has to be rated top two because mm. I have to do one step better. Mm. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> For schooling, mm. it doesn't matter. But I was, I just went, so my the school fees that I was paying was around eight to ten thousand dirhams per month. I don't know. Probably it's it's gone even because of inflation. They've increased it. I'm sure now. The house we got, uh, Wali, believe me, the house we got. We were a family of two, me and my wife. Our kids were little. Like my daughter could walk. My son was, uh, my son got was born in 2015. So he wasn't born even when we were living in that house. It was in Green Community Motor City. And the rent for the house was 250,000 dirhams per year. And what year was that? The, 2015? 2017. 2017. Uh, yeah, so we, we got the house in 2015, but 2015, 2016, 17 for three years. Uh, for, hmm. We started in 2014 and for three years we kept the house. And we hardly, it, the house had like five rooms. We hardly used two or three rooms. The rest of the house was kind of all empty because hmm. we, didn't have, we didn't have a big enough family to even fill up the house. And it's just because I I just got crazy. I got bananas coming to the way. I was like, this is so flashy. This is so fun. Let's just cocaine and champagne. Let's just burn the money. And really? that, that was the kind of attitude uh, we had. So and how many bedrooms pressure. you were telling me that the, the house had? I think it was it had five five rooms. Uh, probably even four the guest, bedrooms and one. Yeah, even if some guests are coming, you, you hardly need one. Uh, exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... Uh, and um, like, so it it was more than I could ever imagine to have afforded. And it's just because my salary went to a level where I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I can buy all this. The other piece, uh, Wali, is uh, social pressure. So I, I am a kind of person, and even if I take a step back, I think success financially, career-wise, whatever it is in life, it is very important for you to know who you are. And it took me a while to know who I am. I was always following someone else. So for instance, if Wally has gotten a better car, I would go like, if Wally has gotten a better car, I think this is the right thing to do. I'll buy a better car as well. Wally is living in a better house, bigger house than me. 
I want a bigger house as well. And it's not just because I am competing with you. It's just because I feel that pressure that if I have to be in a in your social circle, in a certain social circle, I need to maintain some strata around me and, and uh, some kind of uh, environment around me. And that costs a lot. And the kind of friends I had, which is kind of the case in the way when you are in the way uh, you kind of the, the social circle you have, were people who were always going like, next is I'm going to Jumeirah Islands or I'm going to this island and that island and getting a house there. And I was like, okay, we need to move up and up and up and up just because I, I need to maintain my life standard with them. There are people who say, oh, but you're, 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 you're an elder, right? You're, you're, you understand you're young enough or old enough to understand that you don't have to follow what Wally is doing. And that's where I go. Like I can, I say, I can do this, but how do I convince my kids? So people would call my daughter to a birthday party and they would f spend 5,000 dirhams on that birthday party. Now I have to call her friends to my, to her birthday party as well. Right? Because she would expect that if I, she was going to other, other people per birthday party, she got, gets to invite the kids as well. If I invite them and I only spend 1,000 dirhams, it is embarrassing for her because she would go like, when I went there, they gave me a good giveaway, a gift and this and that, and it was fancy. And now when I call them, we are all poor. So, and that's why, Wally, I think I spoke about this in one of your podcasts as well, other podcasts that we did, which is, would you rather be better off if you're earning half a million dollar, but everyone else around you is earning a million dollar, or would you rather be happy if you're earning, let's say, $150,000 and everyone else is around, around you earning $100,000? While I know I would want to earn half a million dollars, but I would not be happy. So, so yeah, th th those are kind of the things. Now, yeah. one more mistake so, I want to call out. Sorry, if you can. Yeah, before, before that, yeah, just to uh, let people know that we have done, I think now half a dozen podcasts together, uh, maybe in Urdu and English both. And uh, I would definitely uh, put all the podcasts in the description of this video so that if somebody wants it uh, to, to, to have a look, they can go. Either in English or in Urdu. I think we have done one or two in English and the remaining are on uh, Urdu. So you guys also can put the, the link to those podcasts. Yes. Another mistake was one of my colleagues bought uh, uh, an expensive car for themselves. And when I met them at the office parking, I was like, oh, you change your car? You upgraded your car? He was like, yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. And I thought I'll gift myself. <laughs> I was like, this is luxury. So my mm. birthday was coming in two months. I went mm -hmm. and I bought a Nissan Patrol for around 300,000 dirhams. 1,000 dirhams, yes. Uh, yes. And it was a, like top of the line, SC, SC whatever it is. N like Nismo, Nismo, I believe. Exactly. So it was Nismo, like, yeah. I, uh, and I think it was even a brand new car that I got from so just out of the showroom. Of course, I couldn't afford it because I didn't have that much money. But I was just paying, I financed the car. And the financing was expensive as well. Okay, but but uh, interestingly, you said that expensive. you cannot afford it, although you could have just financed it and you can be paying monthly installment. It's very easy. But you, you were saying that it's, you cannot afford it by the definition of uh, affording something which is uh, luxury, right? Exactly. So I didn't have that much cash in my bank, right? So I didn't yeah. have that much cash to pay for the car. And hence, I just went and financed it. Not realizing if I don't have cash means I can't mm. afford it. I should not mm. be buying it. Another issue, Willie, is... When I bought the car, I realized in six months that I don't like cars. Like, mm. I don't fancy cars. I like cars. But it's not something which I fancy. Like, uh, there are people who like photography. They will have the best of the cameras. There are people... I like, I like road biking. So I bike on, on, on the road cycling. And I have a very fancy, nice bike. But I use it almost every day in the summers. It's good for my health. It's good for my mental health. I go on bike rides for one to two hours almost every other day. It's something which I enjoy. Every time I'm on that bike, I enjoy it. This car, every time I was sitting in the car, it, was, it didn't feel much different from, for me. For me, it just was extra buttons in the car, which I f felt fancy, Hardly used. but that's it. Mm. Mm. And I was like, I'm paying so much money for this car, which I don't even in, enjoy or is not bringing joy to me. What's the point? So I started to realize that I was just throwing money onto stuff just because someone else was doing and they said they were happy about it because it was my birthday. I gifted myself. So I was like, okay, it will make me happy as well. Not realizing or not even asking the question as to what is that will make me happy. And I was just throwing money here and there. And by the way, 
Since then, my income is far lower than what I used to make in Dubai after tax basis. However, my quality of life has not changed at all. So it's not like I was living a very high quality of life, living in a bigger house. And yeah, I was living in a bigger house, but I was not using the house. I had a better car, but I was not enjoying the car. Now, every dollar that I spend, every cent that I spend goes towards something that I really enjoy. So the quality of that dollar spent is far more now versus that it was in Dubai. Just a quick break. If you want to start your journey for investing in the US stock while staying in the UAE or the wider Gulf region, there are multiple apps that you can use. I use personally two of the reliable apps, which are Baraka and Sarva. These two apps have been phenomenal for me. I've been using these for the last couple of years. If you want to use the uh, referral code and if you haven't got the account yet, then you can get $25 or $50 depending on which app and depending on the terms and condition. The link is in the description below. If you use that referral code, you will get the referral bonus terms and condition apply. Now let's get back to the video. Interesting uh, because and by the way, when did you realize that after buying the car that you have made a mistake? Like it was it instant or was it like over the period of time? So it, it took me six months, but I think one of the reasons was I started to plan my move to Canada. Canada. And because okay. I started to move by plan my move to Canada, I started to do the math, right? Hmm. And I was hmm. like, okay, I this have your liability. I have assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, I thought it's, it's an asset, but it's actually a liability. Yeah. And exactly. when I went to sell it, it sold for a very bad price. I had to hmm. pay something from extra from the pocket to get rid of the car because I was like, instead of paying everything monthly, I just rather get rid of it. So yeah, I started to plan my exit from Dubai. And that's when I realized I'm so deep stuck with all the the terms that I have, all the all the liabilities that I've purchased, that it's very difficult. So I started to get rid of them slowly and steadily. And it took me a year to be in a place where I said, okay, now I'm in a position where I can move to Canada. So, so I see people in Dubai uh, spending a lot on cars, on phones. And if they have a, a higher income bracket, then they will be spending on their houses as well. Uh, but mostly I've seen spending on, even I've seen people spending on iPhones every second year or even every year. And similarly on cars, every two, three years, they feel that the car is old after three years. I don't know. I mean, I've got a nine years old car. This this is an interesting story that I'm going to tell you about my car because I have came to Dubai in 2000, uh, actually 2009, I purchased a new car on cash, uh, even in 2009. And then uh, when I left Dubai, it was um, in uh, in 2014 when I left for Qatar for one year only. And then uh, I didn't feel bad because I already driven that car for uh, for six years. And then I came back in 2015. Uh, I purchased again a new car uh, because I knew this time it will be longer uh, longer term. And then this car is not like a fancy car; it's just a regular four by four. But the thing is, now it's a it's a nine years old car, and I drive that. I uh, I do my uh, videos on that as well. I I show that car in my videos. I do some real estate videos as well. And interestingly, the the agents, uh, because, you know, I, I make videos around personal finance. I make videos around real estate of Dubai as well. I do some um, some some reviews of uh, projects in Dubai off plan and uh, uh, the present um, ready properties projects as well. Uh, and everybody knows that what car what car I'm driving. And I know what cars the 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 regular brokers are driving as well. They drive kind of Mercedes and and Range Rovers and whatnot. So, and I drive a very, uh, like, very humble uh, kind of uh, Mitsubishi. So, uh, but at the same time, I got those leads, which normally those uh, those people with Range Rovers and, and let's say, whatnot, they are getting. So, I'm getting much better leads from my own, while driving a normal car, while they're not getting th those kind of leads. So, that, that makes me think that it's not only about uh, the car that you drive because they they say in um, uh, they say it, it it in hindi or urdu that jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so that kind of feeling that whatever you uh, you find it will be selling that uh, that stuff and i was talking to one of the uh, one of the real estate agent here in dubai and i was talking to him about um, about this emergency fund because i was always uh, wondering what kind of emergency fund these agents are keeping because because these agents sometimes they get uh, a jackpot and they get let's say 100,000 dirhams, 200,000 dirhams in a month or even sometimes 500,000 dirhams. I've seen people getting 1 million dirhams a month. But on the other month, on a down one, uh, they might get only let's say 10,000 dirhams to uh, 20,000 dirhams or what, whatever the case is. So I was always thinking how are they going to uh, 
like uh, formulate their lives uh, around this kind of uh, uh, like uh, the uh, this kind of um, variability so he told me that as an agent and he's a wise man so he told me as an agent i am keeping 3 years of emergency fund and if you are keeping 3 years of emergency fund with you then uh, whatever car you are driving it's none of my business actually maybe you can drive you will be and he was, he was driving a very nice car but then he is also having 3 years of emergency fund if that is the case then i am no, nobody actually i am nobody anyways but uh, i am nobody to uh, ask him why is this uh, uh, this uh, car is so expensive but as he is having so much of emergency fund so much of wealth already accumulated a person can do anything because once you you reach a certain point it is very normal to have uh, this kind of expense uh, i mean people is still i know i mean we we follow many people like um, in in the us uh, who are making content around uh, personal finance and they still live uh, miserly but uh, but for us we can spend money the the wants are there but it has to be uh, rational there has to be a rational behind it so, so it depends on your uh, persona as well how you try to mold the 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 surroundings um, according to what your beliefs are but it takes time so well your question to you when did you have this realization as i talked when i was i turned 33 moved to canada and that's when i realized never again i want to educate myself about personal finance want to master money and not be in the situation again and be re, try to reach financial freedom as soon as possible what was your turning point if you had a turning point if not would love to know see how did you manage yeah. that mindset yeah so i have always been uh, in in a scarcity mindset always like i am i'm thinking always whenever when i moved to dubai as well i thought that this job will be only for for a month two months at max six months this is always in my mind i don't know why it, i was programmed like that uh, that i don't want to plan for a longer term it helped me as well but uh, it it also stopped me from finding new avenues because uh, like all the people coming from south asia they had the, this in, as a mindset that we need to have our own house and this was a mindset that uh, that is good as well and that is of course detrimental as well but for me it proved to be uh, i would say uh, good because then uh, when i came in 2009 and until 2013 i was able to buy my own house back home in pakistan and then after that it liberated me then i thought that okay this is this is it and then i can do anything because now i i don't have that kind of pressure on me to have this kind of um, property back home although i was still in loan but in 2014 i think i i i was uh, or or maybe 2015 i was um, um uh, like i was debt free but after that the mistakes were, were happening like i was although in a uh, like a uh, scarcity mindset i was not as, uh, like spending much i was not spending on wants uh, like here and there okay but not much uh, but still i was not investing in proper way i was investing in properties back home that too in in a country which is uh, prone to have um, inflation prone to have uh, uh, rupee de- depreciation and uh, dollar impact would be w- would be very severe until 2018 i was just spending and investing on my uh, on my properties back home which was insane now i th- I-, i look back and think uh, there might be one or two properties that i have invested uh, were having maybe uh, although they were appreciated but maybe they are just uh, giving me same kind of dollar uh, return that uh, that i invested in but in uh, in majority of the properties i am negative right now but if i knew uh, about investing uh back in 2009 when i started especially about stocks uh, i would have not made the mistake or maybe i would have just uh, invested in one single home which which i call it uh, as a home which is just collecting dust right now but uh, i would have just um, invested that and then moved on and didn't spend any other uh, amount in in properties or let's say uh, such kind of investments so that was like 2018 was although i never uh I never uh, uh, spend on uh, luxuries but at the same time i was not wise with my investments as well uh, during the covid i was watching a lot of videos and then before that as well i started uh, thinking to move away from uh, investments in the properties and then i found out there are ways that you can do um, uh, multiple investments uh, without going into properties without uh, looking into real estate especially uh, uh, like especially uh, in the countries which are uh, which are prone to have uh, this uh, dollar issues 
so that was my realization and then after that there was no looking back i didn't liquidate my properties back home but i was just uh, trying to build up and it was a nice uh, time when i started because then covid hit and after that um, i was still doing dollar cost averaging till the till this date and uh, and that made me think about this youtube channel as well so wali what if i say or someone says to you you're not enjoying life you're just being a miser you're saving every dollar being not a not having an abundance mindset and uh, so this is one and second is you are in a pattern now where you are careful with money saving and all when do you start spending money on yourself so are, are you even enjoying money are you just killing yourself any thoughts on that so until 2018 as i said before i was not uh, uh, is spending on any of my wants at that time although we were traveling by the way we uh, we i didn't uh, compromise on traveling at all uh, even during this whole time uh, that was the only thing that i was actually spending my money on uh, if i say that uh, that was uh, luxurious but i won't say this now as luxury because those were the times that i spent my with my family in multiple countries so uh, so i won't say that i was uh, uh, having a miser mindset i was spending where i was thinking that the value was but after like when i started this youtube channel and then when i uh, thought about financial independence so i don't think so it's it's miser at all i'm i mean i'm investing on myself and i'm investing for uh, for uh, for my family to be free all the time that i don't have to rely on one single job because you know in dubai it's very difficult to uh, think about being laid off and then uh then then to stay here and then find out another job it's a very painful pro- uh, process but now because of all the savings uh, that i've done and all the investments that i've done and all the side hustles that i'm uh, creating now i am actually uh, i have liberated myself from that kind of shackle that uh, always was with me this is so well said wali and thanks you, thank you for saying that let me say what i was saying before as well I find myself living much of a luxury life now than I was living when I was making more money is because now I am careful with regards to spending money only on things that I enjoy versus random crap so this is one and and for instance you talked about travel travel is luxury but it's something that you enjoy versus a car as i said maybe you buying a ferrari you you may enjoy it for first 6 months and that's it but the travel that you do because you like it you are that person you would enjoy, you enjoyed it and then you look at those pictures they pay you dividend and you continue to live those memories second point that i want to make is people think that the, buying things will make them happy this is this is how humans are we generally think that if i buy this i buy that even including travel let's say will make me happy what will really make me make you happy in reality what makes human being happy is optionality having an option of saying today i'll wake up and go to work today i won't go to work today i will play with my child today i will just read a book and today i will write something having that optionality gives you far more happiness than driving a ferrari so and and this this i it took me a while to realize because what has happened is i learned from mistakes i had the best car i had the best house i had the best uh, travel and everything and it wasn't bringing me happiness till now i'm moving to a point where i say okay i have my youtube channel i have some side income i have good investment everything is paying me money maybe another 4 5 years i have to work and after that i'm liberated as you said like i don't have to and even now it's just because i have some shackles with me in terms of uh, especially we, we can talk it on a different day especially if you're a desi you have to live in a certain you live in a certain town you live with certain setup and usually where desis are living together town is expensive and all so you have to pay some premium of how you want to live but if i take out the premium completely i can just retire tomorrow because of what mm-hmm. i've built for myself in past 7 years and maybe mm-hmm. with that we can move into into me moving to canada and how i was able to really drive my income up by the way uh, uh, interesting point you've just mentioned that uh, if you if you downgrade you might be able to survive without the job as well and this is what my point and this is the realization i just had because at that time in 2015 when i uh, purchased my let's say 2013 when i purchased my home then i was thinking okay after 2 years it will be i will be debt free i can go back pakistan i have a home i can do anything of uh, whatever i want in 2015 when this uh, this goal was achieved 
I had a different mindset. And now, if I uh, think back again, I can easily retire back in uh, back home in Pakistan. I can do all what I want based in Pakistan. But now my goals are uh, elevated. But like you can always change your goals, but they have to be uh, tangible because uh, if your goals are just like uh, buying a new car, it can be anyone's uh, goal and it can be achieved very easily because in Dubai, credit is very easy. You don't have to worry about people will come to you and uh, get the signatures for for your uh, new car or let's say uh, the the credit card will come to you uh, by itself, which is uh, which is a detrimental thing because uh, if if that is happening and if you are um, uh, having that kind of cocaine, then you will not be like it will be a dreadful story. Okay, so remember how I said the seventy three thousand dirham income, which if I convert in dollars is around. Two hundred and forty thousand dollars annual without any tax, and I will share with you my income in Canada in twenty twenty. I don't want to share the recent income that I have, but I'll share with you the household income I was making in Canada in twenty twenty. And I can also share with you a screenshot of my uh, tax return without sharing any of the uh, confidential um, tax numbers and all. But just for you to, if you want to put this up here as well. In Canada in 2020, we were making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars Canadian. Now this is gross income, and after tax income was that our take home income was around one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So not very far from two forty thousand dollars of uh, of Dubai. And this kind of puzzles people for two reasons. One, they go like, how were you able to match your net income, sorry, your gross income in Canada to your gross or net income in Dubai? The reason is. in dubai my wife was not working and that's another luxury we had which is it's okay for my wife to not work because i'm making a lot of money but here is the risk and this is something i say to every individual every friend that i have whose wife is not working or not making an income it could be a side income it could be doing sitting at home and making an income is this is your insurance policy when i was in dubai and if i would have died something would have happened to me it would be very difficult for my wife to sustain a life now you can argue buy an insurance yes i can buy an insurance for a year two year three years but i'm young my wife is young my kids are young they have to go to college university it is important that your spouse is in a situation where they can sustain the family the house by virtue of you not being there and i never thought about this and i only thought about this when i moved to canada as i told you that when i was sleepless i was like okay these three people like two of my kids and my wife they are relying on me and i don't have a job and if tomorrow i don't even wake up it would be such detrimental for them because they were the, i only have, i'm the only person who, who has experience to make that kind of money because i never allowed my wife not allowed but i never encouraged my wife to work because she did, she she never chose as well we were in a circle where all the wives were not working we made sure that when we moved to canada that batul my wife she picks a job she picks up an income as well and not just because we want to have a good life but more so if tomorrow something happens to me this is insurance that she can sustain the kids and that is why we were able to kind of match the same net income the same gross income that we were making in the way because both me and my wife started to work so this is one the second piece is when people typically ask in canada oh the tax is very high and if you ask people what they say half of your salary is gone i was only paying 25% of 25% tax on my income and i figured this out in the first year when i moved i was like i need to understand when i was trying to understand how to make money how to grow money there's a big element of how do you optimize your tax and i read a lot of books on it a lot of materials and i teach as well now which is how you can bring your tax down so from around 45% my marginal tax would be 45% so every extra dollar that i earn the tax would be 45% on it or around 50% but my average tax is around 25% just because i was able to legally and in the proper way optimize my tax there are different avenues which if you know right you put your money your savings your investment in that particular way you can bring all your tax down and this is me earning an income and having a job if you don't have a job if you have a prop if you have a business you can even take it down below 10% So this this idea that oh Canada will kill you with tax yes but there are ways if you're smart enough with the money So this is very interesting uh, I would like you to expand on that 
uh, further let's say if if somebody is going because this is very uh, very hot topic for someone who is going to canada and i know people or let's say uh, if if i talk about one of the guys who who has gone to canada with 130000 uh, dollars of salary and uh, it's a single income household um what kind of tax benefit uh, first of all what let's say he's in toronto um what kind of uh, tax bracket he's going to be falling under let let's say he, if he's having two kids and then what are the possibilities for him as a as a let's say permanent job holder which who is who is not uh, having any contract um uh, what are the possibilities for him to um for him to save um, taxes legally Yeah, so one thirty thousand dollars, I would say somewhere around forty five percent tax, marginal okay. tax. Uh, okay. However, on average, it could be somewhere around let's say forty or thirty eight percent. Now, how do you really bring it down from there? Is for instance, one is there is this option called uh, RRSP, where if you invest every dollar that you invest in the RRSP account, you don't pay any tax on that. So, if you have one thirty thousand dollars, you can take out twenty thousand dollars from this. One thousand thirty thousand dollars. Put it in that account, and if you put it in that account, actually you will be paying tax on not one thirty thousand dollars. You will be paying tax on one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Those twenty thousand dollars just go tax free, completely, and you can use that investment account to invest in stocks and invest in crypto, whatever kind of investment that you want to do. And you can compound that kind money. Of, what kind of uh, time frame that we are talking about to invest in that? Like, uh, do we have to tie the amount for a longer period of time in that no, RSRP? No. No. So the only challenge is whenever you take money out from RSP you have to pay tax on it. So here's the idea. When I'm 30, I invest my money in RRSP. Let's say I invest $20,000 every month. Every year, sorry. Every year I invest $20,000, I don't pay any tax on it. Uh-huh. And my tax rate is very high because the government knows my income is high. So let's say my tax rate is 40%. Come age 50, I want to mm. retire at age 50. At age 50 my income is zero because I'm not earning anything else. Right. anymore i'm right. retired right. right now i can take out that money when i take out that money i don't pay tax 40% tax on it i only pay okay. tax on it based on my rate basis that income now my needs are less as well my house is paid my car is paid my kids are gone so i don't need a lot of money coming out of that account so i don't need 130000 coming out of that account i only need 40000 coming out out of that account so i pay tax mm. only on 40000 now mm. another trick is You don't need to take out forty thousand from that account altogether. You must also be having some other savings on the side. So you use twenty thousand from there. You take out twenty thousand from here, and eventually, your tax bracket is very small. So instead of paying forty, so you save forty percent tax on that money, and you will end up paying let's say ten percent tax on that money eventually when you take it out at a, at age of fifty. Because your uh, in, in, because your income is uh, in the lower bracket now. Exactly, exactly. So it's called tax deferred, and people don't get this point, which is tax deferred. Okay, tax deferred means if I don't pay tax tomorrow, t- today, eventually I'll have to pay tax. I say, yeah, you have mm. to pay tax, but you have to pay lower tax because you take that money out only when your income is low. But what if, uh, let's say, if if I keep on making money for, for from any of my sources, not necessarily job, but maybe from any other business or investments. uh what will happen in that case uh, i would not be probably then i will not be taking out the money uh, that is in the the account because i don't need say that say that differently say that differently so let's say if uh, if i at the age of 50 i'm still working and i don't want to retire in terms of my okay i i want to retire in in my capacity as a 9 to 5 job but i still have some side hustles or let's say i'm having some kind of business which is giving me good money and i would i don't want to forego that but at the same time if i would be um, uh, like uh, repatriating uh, repatriating or recovering the the amount from my uh, from my investments account would that attract the same kind of tax now or do i have some other ways to reduce yeah it? so so good point so let's say you have a business income if you how about you can choose to say at age 50 you will not get money from your business income so you invest everything back in your business you don't take anything out you only take out money from rrsp because you mm-hmm. want to ensure your tax rate is low because if you combine the two together then eventually you'll have to pay higher tax if the two yes. together become 130000 again then you yes. end up paying 40% tax okay. so you don't want that so in year 1 you only take out money from rrsp maybe in year 2 you take out business you use business money in year 3 right. you take out money from rrsp right right, right. Uh, so th- this is one which is 
you have to ensure that at any given point in time you don't take out big chunk of money so your tax rate mm. remains less mm. second point you and i know what is the eighth wonder of the world that's a question to you vali compounding of course compound so yes. when i put money in that account i don't pay tax on it okay now this money grows uh, with uh, with compounding yes so this money is growing with compounding which is all tax free so i am also benefiting from compounding on the money which i didn't pay tax on hmm. and at the end of the day in the long run you will you do and i both know that if i stop contributing to that account as well there come a time when what i've contributed will be smaller than the amount of money which is generated through compounding only yes. so that's another element which is you benefit all of course you'll have to pay tax on that compounded money as well but you've allowed tax savings today to grow that money so it's like mm-hmm. me getting a loan from you 40% loan from you on $20000 that i've invested to let it grow and earn money so i kind of take loan from the government and then let that money grow and eventually i'll pay them tax but i kind of benefited from compounding that money which i saved just a quick break if you want to start your journey with real estate investment in dubai with a very small amount as low as 500 dirhams you can use my referral code in the description below for both the platforms of smart crowd and get sick both of these platform you can start investing with 500 dirhams only you can have fractional ownership of the properties that you invest in and you get the rental return every month i have portfolios with both the platforms the link is in the description for the referral terms and condition apply now let's get back to the video yeah actually uh, this thing along with uh, there are some other uh, important tips as well because i was delivering a lecture here in the in a university in dubai and uh, there were young students who were about to pass out and um, i was telling them about tax optimization and also uh, something called as a company um, uh, contribution uh, towards your pension both of these things are uh, alien concept here in the gcc because uh, we don't talk about taxes at all uh, on on personal level now there are corporate taxes but we don't talk about um, the taxes on on the personal income and also we don't talk about uh, contribution towards the the pension schemes of the companies now there are some pension uh, pension funds coming up but still the this is a very nascent kind of um, uh, idea uh, in this region but as you go to uh, to western countries uh, this tax optimization and also contribution towards your pension these uh, become um, uh, really uh, compounder because um, uh, they they were actually fascinated when i told them that company will contribute the same amount that you are uh, contributing towards your pension pension so probably one of the uh, one of the aspect is that as well while you are moving to canada that you should be talking about uh, you should uh, talk to me about this tax optimization okay i understand that uh, anybody who is going to canada or the us or any western country they should understand how taxes work because then uh, uh, you will be able to save more or um invest more as well because of the tax saving but what about this uh, co- company contribution have you um thought about it and and did did you know once you were going to canada yeah so uh in in dubai i didn't have that option and you're right i don't know it, it doesn't exist in dubai at all this concept no no but now but but now so. uh, but now uh, yeah pension contributions are coming up because you know this uh, term gratuity uh this yes. is uh, this is ever since there but now they have uh, this uh, uh the setup that they are uh, they are creating funds where you are going to be investing your gratuity in and that that will be kind of your pension but again it is it is again a very new concept here people will not understand because in you know in 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 pension funds if the market goes down your your uh, your pot will go down as well which will be hard to understand for many people to uh, which are here but at least it will be better if at least they invest in some kind of money market fund because right now whatever gratuity it's accumulating let's say if you're uh, if you're here for 20 years uh, whatever gratuity have been accumulated there is no interest on that that can be paid to you because it's just a formula it's just a formula based on your current income not uh, whatever you have accumulated so there are uh, there are products that are coming up now which allows you to at least invest in money market fund so at uh, least you can get uh, 3% to 4% whatever the returns are uh, prevalent prevailing as of now they will get it but as of now oh. there is nothing so i didn't know about this but when i joined my first company i as i said the first 3 months in canada all the books i read were on personal finance everything like tax personal finance income i i i do my taxations myself 
I never, for only for the first year, I hired a tax agent or tax lawyer to file my tax. And after that, I was like, I need to understand it every dollar that I put in myself. So I exactly know what I do with it. So for the first three months, that's what I did. I educated myself and I realized this company money is free money. I put in 3% or I put in 6% and company gives me 6% for free. You know, I had a friend in a company, in my company, and he was like, I don't invest in uh, the company contribution. It's called DCPP in Canada. I don't invest in DCPP. And I was like, why? He's like, because I'm paying off my mortgage. My mortgage is, uh, it was a higher rate for him. I don't know why he had, he had gotten a higher rate and his rate was somewhere around, let's say 4% back then. And he's like, because my rate is high, I want to pay off my house first. I'm like, do you realize this is 100% return on your money? When you contribute 6%, the company gives you 6% on top. This is 100% return. You will never ever, it would be, you would be hard pressed to find 100% return anywhere else. So I, I kind of converted him and eventually he started investing in it as well. I was like, it's good to pay off your home. It's, it's wise, but not at a cost of not contributing with the, with the company. Yeah, even, even yes. if, if, if that is the case, let's say, if, 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 hypothetically speaking, if his, uh, his house doubles in the value in next uh, 10 years, even then, He's not uh, uh, like um, doing uh, good to himself by not uh, contributing towards company retirement. I mean, company uh, contribution. Even exactly. if, if exactly. his house doubles. Yes. Exactly. Now, so I, I talked about RRSP. There is another thing which is called FHSA. It's an, it's an account which recently started where the government allows you to invest in an account. Again, tax-free. You get the tax money back to save for house. So you can use that money against buying your first house, which is getting expensive in Canada day by day. But again, you get this opportunity to say, okay, I save 20% or 40%, the tax rate is 40% on that money that you're investing. And then you can use that money towards the house. Another piece is, uh, it's called RESP. It's a fund which is for the kids. So I invest $500 in that every, not 500, it's around $2,500. So every year I invest $2,500 in that account and the comp and the government pays me $500, which is a good 20% return. 20% wow. return. This is in the US or, the ca or Canada? Canada, this is Canada. So okay. all this that I'm talking about is Canada because I, I moved to US a year and a half back. But hmm. this is all, all Canada. So I invest $2,500 and I can invest that money, by the way, to your question which you were asking. I can invest my money that I'm contributing with the, with the company so both the 6% that I've contributed and the 6% that the company gave me, I can invest both of them, even if I want to invest in crypto, like as crazy, as high risk as crypto. I don't recommend investing anything in crypto, but I'm just saying that you have the flexibility to invest anywhere. All the money that you have in your RRSP, which is tax deferred, you can invest anywhere. All the money in your FHSA, which is for the first house buying, you can invest anywhere. And then there is another account, which is called TFSA, which is also another beautiful account. Here, when you invest money, you have to pay tax on it. So you pay tax on the money, then what you save, you invest in it. And then that money grows. All the compounding that happens on that money, you don't pay any tax on it. So all the income that is generated on that money, capital gains, everything, zero tax on it. So you can invest. Now, all these accounts have certain limits as well. It's not like you can invest in your entire know, wealth into these accounts. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, but, but Behruz, it's, it's, uh, did, you, did you think about making a video around, let's say, this hypothetical case of 130,000 earning of a person and then he's contributing to each of these accounts uh, at max whatever he can do and then what are the tax savings uh, eventually did, did you try making such kind of video or have you made such calculations so uh, well yeah, i have i have made calculations for myself i've also made a couple of videos on it but not exactly in giving an example probably i'll make a video after uh, your uh, queue yeah, yeah, it's, which it's, is it's, sharing an example as to if you yeah. earn this how much you can make but I've made video where I explain what these accounts are, which account is better. So every time you have an extra dollar, which account you should invest in. As I said, uh, very on, on one of our chats as well, in North America, 80% of personal finance is around taxation. Maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe, maybe 50, at least more than 50% is around taxation. If you understand taxation, that's where you can make a, that's why Trump came in and saying he didn't pay any taxes, right? <laughs> He's yeah, like, yeah. I, I didn't cheat anything. This is how the system works. I know the system, so I play the system. So if right. you know the system, if you understand the system. Now, there is another thing. There are people who go for full-time jobs, right? Everyone wants a full-time job. I want a full-time job. But if you go as a contractor, as against mm. full-time. So let's say if today I become a contractor for my company, where I'm a 
I am on con on a contract with my company. Let's say a year or two year contract. Now, of course, I understand that the contract means that the contract can be cancelled any day. But so what? So they can fire me any day as well. It's not like if if I am a full time employee, yeah, they'll keep course. me forever. Of course, of course. When you are a contractor, mm. your income is not reported as a as a taxable income. You get your full income. It's like a business income. So mm. you get your full income, and then you can put your expenses on top of it. So you can charge your car. You can charge your uh, meals that you go. You can put, so you can reduce that income and not have to pay the kind of tax I pay because I'm a full time employee. Let's say my tax bracket is forty five percent. If I was a contractual employee, I can bring my tax bracket down to ten percent, not even twenty five. So today I'm doing twenty five after doing all the magic with RRSPs and TFSs and all and RESPs. And if you are a contractor, you can even bring it down to ten percent or even lower because you'll start putting in expenses, which will bring your taxable income down. So that's another mm -hmm. thing which I I didn't realize because I found some I saw someone and he's like I they were giving me a full time contract option to become a full time employee and i said no <laughs> i'm making more money being on a contract than if i would make if i would become a full time employee so so bahrul i would i would give you an idea uh, make a video about around this and what we'll do we'll have a, a podcast again on my urdu channel or english channel i don't know but this is a very interesting topic for me let's say if if somebody as an immigrant goes to canada and and is getting somehow after 6 months or 7 months or even immediately if he's getting 100000 20000 120000 let's say uh as a single household how much money uh, first of all if he's doing if he's doing nothing and getting uh, the the amount back uh, himself uh, and taxed by the government and going directly to the government um is going to he, he's going to pay and then what if uh, one by one if we are going to uh, allow him to invest in specific um investments what are the breakdowns i mean this will be an interesting figure i am sure it will be an interesting figure Yeah, let's do that. This would be a, this would be good help as well because I know, given the channel that I have with Batool on on um, moving to Canada, there mm -hmm. are certain questions which come, and the questions are even like, uh, should I move my money in dollars or Canadian dollars, and how do I transfer money and all? So people are really interested, especially who are who want to move there, uh, into knowing all this. And mm -hmm. again, this is this is just magic. Once you know this, you will start saving and making so much money. As I said, and I, I'll say it again. when i was moving to uh canada it's not like i i didn't have any money the the, the only reason i was able to have some money was because i was leaving procter gamble i had a 10 year service with procter gamble so they gave me a, a big severance uh, check but apart from that i didn't save anything much for for myself but i was able to increase my my wealth by four times and become a a, a millionaire and even even above a million i'm significantly being above 1 million dollars in in wealth so and that was only because i was able to understand this taxation piece mm nice very nice uh this is actually a, an interesting piece for me as well i mean once i understand this whole scenario i can make multiple content pieces around it even by my university talks because a lot of uh, uh, students that i talk to they might be going to canada and this is this is a gold mine for them for whoever is going to canada or even as a as a as a immigrant this is a gold mine information for them because most of the people i know they talk about they rant about taxes in canada but nobody talks about how to save legally or how to invest because i think investment mindset is always missing because first of all people are not investing in the stocks this is the first thing they always think about the 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 property or the real estate that is the one thing that they go for now yeah. i'll come to the investment part as well because i rightly so i did not invest any money except for buying two properties in bahria town karachi which is down half the value which with, with versus what i invested other than that i didn't invest anything uh, i i did have a property in dubai uh, but i sold it exactly at the right time which kind of helped me as well but it wasn't because i was smart someone was buying for a property i just bought a property as well just kept it for 2 years same bought like somebody was going buying a car someone was Ex buying a yeah. car and you <laughs> yeah just, just the following that and then because yeah. i was leaving canada in 2017 mm -hmm. i just sold the property because i needed the cash uh but that's it now mm -hmm. the the other point that i wanted to <clears throat> make apart from investment is another way you can reduce your tax income is having your side business So I started a side business, online side business of selling uh, yoga accessories. Mm -hmm. And what I did was the idea is you have to have some side income. Once you have some side income, you can put a lot of expenses against it. So I would put my 
part of my mobile bill against it. I would put part of my um, meals cost, like if I go with my wife and I would justify it, it was a business expense in terms of you would talk some, something about business, I would put that in as, a, as an expense as well. And if there is any travel involved, anything which slightly I can justify that it has something to do with the business I have, I would put that expense in. And I started showing at least for the first three years, I showed loss on that business, which is very natural. For the first three, four, five years, you'll show a significant loss in your business because you're starting. So I would, I would have a loss in my business, which will bring, which will, which made actually the government pay me tax back. So if I have a, let's say $5,000 loss, mm. the government would pay me 40% of that $5,000 mm -hmm. to me. So mm. that's another piece, which is if you can build Very some side income on the side. So for yeah, instance, yeah, if yeah. you have a YouTube, mm. buying mm. a Mac. So in US, I bought a MacBook last year. Mm. Mm. I bought a camera last year and I bought it in December because I realized by the time December was coming, I was like, my income is pretty high for me to put a lot of stuff in it and I can bring it into a negative number. So I bought MacBook, I bought some cameras, uh, stuff like that in order to uh, bring that cost down. But again, MacBook is something which is exactly actually dedicated to my business, but there could be things which you can use for two things like mobile bill, internet bill, house rental. You can charge part of your house rental for that uh, YouTube business. Now, it doesn't mean that if I don't have the YouTube business, I'll let go of that house or I won't have pay that uh, my owner that rental. I pay my rental, let's say I pay $2,000, let's say to my owner. I still pay that $2,000. But now I have a business, I have a room which is dedicated to YouTube. So I charge 10% of that $2,000 into my expense and I bring right. my taxable income down. So that's, right. a, that's another way of doing it. Uh, right. Actually, uh, you know, uh, there, there, is, there are a couple of uh, YouTubers I know, they brag about their G-Wagons uh, in US and people always say, some, some uh, like uh, uh, smart people always comment under their videos that you're not uh, buying these cars just to have your own car. You're talking about these cars, you, you're buying these cars just to waive off your taxes or reduce your tax liabilities. So it's all about, I mean, you're bragging as well. This is yeah. making your brand, uh, brand um, equity. Yeah. And also you're saving taxes at the same time. So it's really about smart investing and smart uh, tax optimization, which can, uh, le uh, which can bring wonders. So uh, Baruch, actually, I would definitely think about steps that one can take uh, one by one and then see how the tax uh, tax uh, amount comes uh, down really it it is really interesting yeah let's 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 do some content on that now talking about tax so tax is one thing the other piece i i was able to understand i made money as compounding it's only when i figured out compounding i was like i'm finance major i'm i, I was see for i had a cfo title and i didn't know how powerful compounding is so actually, before you elaborate on that, I would like to ask you and within the, that, uh, that answer that you're giving right now, uh, like I talk to a lot of people uh, after this YouTube channel and a lot of them are finance executives, let's say charter accountants, uh, MBA finances and whatnot. And I find that uh, their personal finance is very weak. I mean, they, they don't, uh, they do uh, uh, finances on the level of uh, huge companies but uh, they are unable to uh, understand what their own they, they're not able to put their own house in order so what is like that i mean is it my own uh, wrong perception or i'm not i'm not being in proper people to to have this judgment done or is it like that so well yeah, i think there are two things one is instant gratification which is i want to go to the gym tomorrow and in a week's time i want to have six packs and this is not how life works Mm -hmm. Everything you need to give everything time and time of around 10 years. You have to keep a 10 year horizon for anything, whether it's your YouTube channel, whether it's your side income, side business or investment. Irrespective of whether you're a finance guy, you know everything about finance. Human beings cannot fathom that they'll have to wait 10 years for the return to come. So that is one thing. The second piece is no matter how smart you are, Compounding is not intuitive. So let me ask you, what is three plus three? It is six. Six plus three? Nine. Nine plus three? Twelve. I can go on and you can keep giving me answers till yeah. zil. Yeah. What is three into three? Nine. Now nine into three? That number into twenty-seven. Twenty-seven into three or 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 doubling it, whatever. So when it becomes more a complex mathematics, exponential mathematics, 
yes. it is difficult to do the math. To, to, you to, can do yeah, the math yeah. for to some extent, but yes. then it's just it's beyond you. Yes, I don't know if yes. you know that example of the chess board. So let me let me tell you the story. Uh, you know the story of how the chess board was created. I don't know if it's a myth or not, but it's a story which was no, no. Okay, so there there was a king and uh, a, a a guy in the kingdom in that kingdom. He created the game chess with the with the all the squares and all. So he brought it to the king, and the king was extremely happy. He was like, "Wow, this is one of the best games. Like, I really enjoyed it. It's so good. Tell me what reward you want." Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy was very smart. someone who's who created chess smart so he said what i want you to do is i want you to put one grain of rice on one uh, cube of the chess board on the next cube i want to you to double it two then four then eight and keep yeah. doubling it yeah uh, sorry four and 16 and so keep keep doubling oh. them out uh, mm. four, four eight and then 16 the king was like this is easy like one grain would go to to how long like it's just a chess board right it's a few boxes yes yes by the time the guards who were putting the rice on the board they reached halfway the guard came and he said we've ran out of rice in our stores i think mm. by the time he reached 60% of the board they said we've ran out of rice in the entire kingdom our kingdom and by the time which they couldn't reach but there is not enough rice in the entire world to fill up the mm. chess board by doubling it each time do that do that some day when you have time do that do it on excel keep doubling it to the point and you realize there is not enough rice grains in the world to fill up that chess board yeah this i i think i heard this story but it's uh, it's in a different co- context but you telling me that this uh, this game of chess when it was invest, uh, invented uh, this this happened maybe it's a it's a story but it's a very nice story i've heard about uh, this in a different context yes okay. so so the king was king was like he's a smart guy he's the king right but mm-hmm. even he couldn't get it and even if it it was you and me we would be just sitting there and go like one and two mm. and four let's give him yeah. what he wants like silly guys he gave me such a good game i'm asking him to ask me anything and he's asking mm. for a few grains of rice let's just give, give him so that is the piece which even if you are the smartest guy the finance guy or the king you don't get it because these are exponential numbers so mm. it, it 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 it's hard to get but i was able to eventually figure it out and i started to invest in stock market uh and uh, again stock market investment very wisely uh, you create a lot of content on that as well i create a lot of content around that as well and i let that money compound we usually think that in my opinion where i grew up it was all about invest in property you invest in property mm. and that's how you get rich people mm. don't realize there is so much cost involved with property you have to especially here you have to pay taxes irrespective of whether you have rented the property or not there are mm. days when your property may not be rented months or days uh there are uh, repair maintenance costs especially houses here are of wood so there is something or the other that you have to repair unlike you have to repair house anyways machinery or the appliances or anything the cost is so much the the fee that you pay to the agent and all if you start doing the math houses usually in my opinion pay out if you hold them for 10 15 years you cannot just have in a house investment for 10 or for 2 3 4 years it doesn't for first 2 3 years it is a negative payout altogether uh, so i invested started to learn about stock market started to invest in stock market and that's where i compounded a lot of my money right right no no doubt about that because uh, i have been through this uh, uh, real estate because i have as i said before i invested in uh, real estate uh, looking nowhere like left left right and center i was just investing in uh, rental properties and now although they are giving me very good cash flow because all of them are on cash uh, with me but um, like just uh, one of the apartment i was just uh, running through the maths for that apartment and i came to realize that almost 3 months uh, worth of rent was going into either repair either uh, maintenance or the building maintenance fees or these things so uh, assuming that okay this is going to give me x amount of uh, money every month but not realizing that almost 3 months will be wasted in different kind of uh, uh, issues within the building and that too not talking about uh, uh, like if the rental uh, if the tenant is doing some uh, let's say uh, bad things or he's uh, not paying on time or whatever the case is that is not taking into consideration that because currently i'm only talking about repair maintenance and regular uh, fee that uh, that the uh, that the property is uh, is incurring 
Yeah. Yeah. And and the point is, well, because people argue that if you take a loan, then your returns are better because you've kind of leveraged. And my mm. argument is, if you are talking about leverage, you should also do apples to apples math. You can you should also do leverage in investments as well. In you stocks. can't just say I leverage mm. one way, and then when mm. you compare versus stocks, you only compare without leverage. Mm. And I'm not in favor of leverage to begin with. Uh, this mm. is one. And uh, second piece is, given what you said. In S&P 500, you can make around 10% return, historically speaking, let's say, if you invest in S&P 500. If the property is giving me 10% return, it's not worth it because the amount mm. of risk, the mental stress is a lot. So the property mm. has to give me 15% return for me to say, I will invest in property over the 10% return because exactly. the 10% return is less stressful as against the... Mm. 50. Now, there is stress to that as well because market keeps going up and down, but as it's for 10 years then you don't have to stress about the volatility. But then the risk is high here because the tenant can screw up the house and stuff like that. So people don't realize they go like, okay, you get 10% here, I get 10% of my property. I go, no, no, no. You need to have 15% from your property to pay mm. off for the stress that you're taking. Because because uh, there is a difference between active income and passive income. Exactly. Because in, in the house case, it's mostly you are doing passive, but it's it's certain degree of passiveness that it, uh, activeness is also there. But for uh, stocks, if you're doing just ETF investing, it's 100% passive. You don't have to worry about anything. But by the way, Willie, I think that's another content as well, because people who come from Middle East and Pakistan and India, Bangladesh, all, when they come to Canada, they still have that mindset. I will buy a property and I will hmm. invest in a property. Hmm. And in Dubai, it's still easy because hmm. the owners have a lot of right. You can take out your yes. tenant tomorrow. Yes, in yes. In Canada, yeah, not, you not tomorrow. Your... Not tomorrow. Maybe a, it takes one year at max. Oh, one but, year, you yeah. but you can. But you can. But you can so very they can easily. Choose, they can choose not to pay you for a year. No, 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 no. This is this is the point. I mean, they can. You can. Okay. So basically, if I have an uh, if I have an apartment which is uh, uh, which is rented out, and for some reason I want to kick out the tenant either because the rents have gone too high. And my uh, red uh, here we call it as uh, RERA index. If the RERA index is not up to the mark, and you let's say if you think that the apartment can easily go for let's say hundred thousand dirhams per year, but you are getting around let's say seventy thousand right now, and the uh, and the at max you will be able to push uh, the tenant to eighty thousand, and the RERA rental index is also talking about eighty five thousand, but the market value you know that it will be hundred thousand uh, dirhams. In that case, uh, you will be only able to get, let's say, 85,000 at max. But if you want to evict that tenant, you have to give him a one year's notice period. And that in, during this, this notice period, of course, the tenant will be paying you the rent. It's not possible that he's not going to the, pay the rent. This is a good thing because in Canada, I know the tenant can run away with your, uh, uh, with your rent. At least you have the uh, security to get the rent in case the tenant is not paying you the rent, maybe uh, three months, two months at max, and the police will uh, help you out in that. But in Canada, I know that uh, it's a horror story. My experience, Wally. So my experience, I gave a house to a, a, a lady. She had two kids. I met her. I met her just because I wanted to see her if she she looked fine. And after seventh month, her check started to bounce. Oh. Um, and uh, it bounced the first time I called her. She said, I'll pay you later. And she did pay me after 10 days. Then the second one bounced. So it, there was a pattern which was picking up. And then I was like, okay, I need to come and visit the house. And she's like, I can't let you in to visit the house. I was mm. like, I need mm. to check the house, how it looks like. She's like, oh, mm. I'm either I'm not there, I'm busy and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is not good. So I asked my agent to go and check the house. And he went mm. and he showed me the pictures. The carpet had all dog poop. So she had a Oof. pet in the house and it destroyed yeah. all the carpet. And, um, and then she, one of her last checks not just bounced, but it never came back. Like she didn't even pay me back. And then I kind of begged her. I was like, tell me what you want from me. Just leave my house. <laughs> now, luckily, she, she, we, I just waved off the last month. Like I said, you don't have to pay the last month. You can just leave. And she decided to leave. Uh, but she could have chosen not to leave. And I asked, asked a lawyer and the lawyer told me, she, it can take you a year or two years before you can take her out. And during that time, she won't pay me a dime. Mm -hmm. so I was like like for two years I would be just paying the mortgage for a house for which no rental comes in this is super stressful so again for North America specifically in Canada if you're earning 10% from stock market you should be earning 15% plus from rental income otherwise it's you're not right. worth it and people don't get it people come here and still are in the same mindset of 
I'll buy a house, I'll invest in the house, property. Yeah, property goes up here very fast. It has been going up. Property keeps, not recently, it, it's, it came down, but property is a, has been working well for people who invested. But it's not as simple as just saying, I buy a property, it will go up and I'll put it on rent and income and all. It's more than that. Yeah, yeah. You, you cannot get the ca positive cash flows. It is also prone to uh, interest rates as well. Uh, recently, a friend of ours, a common friend of ours, Yasin, was making a video and I made uh, several videos for on that Urdu channel on that particular topic that uh, his, um, uh, his amortization went from, I think, 25 years to 60 years just because of the interest rate. So you never know what cycle you, you are stuck in. So that is also important. While stocks, of course, uh, you can have flat market for, let's say, full decade as well. But then you have a long-term horizon. You will not be selling your home if the, if the price, price goes down and you are having still uh, some kind of cash flow out of it or even negative cash flow out of it. But you will not be selling the house just because uh, it has gone down in the value. But the stocks, the problem is people tend to st uh, in, uh, like, uh, divest from it because it's very easy. You can just go and with a click of a button, you can just sell the stocks. So two things. One, it is easy. And second, it is very real time. You don't yeah. have your you don't have your property being valued every second. Yeah. What is my value of the property today, tomorrow? Mm. And I don't know. Mm. But for stocks, you are valuing your investments every second. So that yeah. is kind of uh, if you stop seeing that, if you make it as a property thing as well, which is you don't know the value of the property, like you have an idea, someone in your neighborhood sold the property for this amount. But that's a range which can be off by a good 10%. But in yeah. stocks, you are not off by 10%. You exactly know what is your value or worth on that particular day. Yeah, that, that is the reason I tell everybody that uh, you need to make uh, systems around your investment. So let's say if I don't invest in Bitcoin at all, but let's say if you if you are a Bitcoin geek and you want to see Bitcoin go up and you believe in Bitcoin, then even if it's going to $10,000, $16,000, $25,000, $70,000, $100,000, you will be investing all the way. It's not that, okay, if it's $70,000, you are going to invest in, in it now because you think now it will go to $100,000. So if you don't have that system around Bitcoin even, then you will, uh, you will lose big time because then uh, you will just uh, ride on the wave and try to time the market. Either it's Bitcoin, either it's property, either it's stock. Okay, Behrouz, uh, it was nice, uh, nice talking to you about these topics and I really had some uh, insightful uh, uh, like uh, uh, thoughts uh, with me now to make content around Canadian Canadian immigration because this topic on my Urdu channel especially it goes uh, it goes very well and we will collaborate soon especially about this tax thing and I'm sure you were going to make some videos around that but I'm sure I'm I think I'm gonna make some kind of uh, 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 some kind of uh, hypothetical scenario which I know for people who already went to Canada and they are complaining big time about taxes. And I'm 100% sure they're not invested anywhere because just a while back, my friend, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, who whom I know very well, uh, he was uh, like, he is in Canada for last four years and he was talking about uh, wealth simple account just now. So if he's talking wow. about such basic things after yeah. four years of going to Canada, I'm sure he's, he has paid already a fortune in, in, in taxes. So such kind of people, I'm sure, will help, uh, will get help from these, uh, this content. So, Beruz, thanks, thanks a lot. In the end, towards the end of this video or podcast, uh, what would you like to say? No, Wally, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. I always enjoy these discussions. I always enjoy sharing knowledge. This is how I learned. Uh, it is very important for people to know not just how much salary they can make, but also how much they can take home and save and eventually invest and grow their wealth. There's a huge difference in between being rich and wealthy and wealth is where the power lies because it gives you optionality as I talked before. Actually, people don't even aspire to be that person in the car. So Morgan Housel says this a lot, which is he said he, he was a valet in his uh, youth and he would see expensive cars come in the hotel where he was a valet and he would never look at the person in the car. He would always look at the car and go like, I wish I had this car. While the person in the car feels that everyone is looking at him, no one is looking at the person in the car. Everyone is just looking at the car and going like, I wish I had this car. So anyways, thank you, Willie. Thanks for uh, this session again. And thanks for you sharing uh, some knowledge about uh, and stories from your side as well, which I'm sure will also help a lot of uh, viewers watching this video. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.